Children can be dismissed to children's church. One of, uh, one of my favorite songs, Days of Elijah, we just sang it uh, a minute ago, and uh, I hope you love that song, and I hope you grow to love that song, because we are going to sing that every week um, as we're through this study. So, uh, yes, uh, and uh, I can't wait until, you know, the end to hear our voices shout uh, as we Proclaim the way of the Lord. Um, now you may remember that we sang that, that song when we uh, came to the end of our study of the, the armor of God. And uh, it was written by a, a man named Robin Mark in the 90s. And it, uh, he's, a, he's a northern Irish Christian singer, songwriter, worship leader, and recording artist. And he's, he's uh, uh, based out of Belfast, Ireland. And uh, that song became well-known in America in about 1999 with the release of his uh, album, Revival in Belfast. And uh, as you know, Courtney has been in Ireland this past week. She's still there right now. She was in Belfast the other day. And uh, so, um, you know, it's almost as if the Lord has been laying the groundwork for this series for a little while think maybe um, yeah I mean that that song is it's rousing and it's stirring it's encouraging it really stirs my heart as it as it contrasts the uh, the troubles of battle with the promises of victory through Christ and uh, I'll, I'll read how on how he put it he says how do you express the sense that these might be days not of failure and of submission but of the sort of resilient, declaring, even arrogant trust and hope that Elijah had in his God. That these are not days of God stepping back and allowing the world and the church to roll uncontrolled towards eternity, but rather days when he is calling on his body to make a stand, to offer right praises and declare that he is totally in control. Well, I reckon you might write the words, these are the days of Elijah. And so that's, that's why that song came to mind as we, as we finish the armor of God here. And I keep cutting out there, don't I? Um, technology is great when it works. Must be something that can be said today that uh, the Lord, uh, or that the enemy doesn't want us to hear. So um, we're going to keep on going. So maybe... Uh, Maybe you can grab me another headset or a hand mic or something, uh, just in case. So, um, but as we, as we came to the end of that series, The Armor of God, this, this song just came to mind. And uh, that's why we sang it. I thought it was so fitting, and especially as I played that video, those, those soldiers, you know, singing that song as we think about the battle that we're in. Um, and at that time, I, I kind of immediately thought of, of the, the book and uh, the, the thought of, of going into a study like that. Um, but the Lord showed me that we needed some offensive weapons first, you know, that we needed, we needed to have the fruit of the Spirit before we moved on. And so that's where we went. went we went to the, the fruit of the Spirit. And so as we wrapped that up, I thought, well, maybe now is the time for e Ezekiel. And uh, it's 40 chapters um, fantastic book for us to examine, but, but then the Lord said, well, maybe, maybe not quite yet. Maybe, maybe not quite yet. Maybe we need to dip, dip our toes in there a little bit first. And so he kept bringing me back to Elijah. And so uh, the central character to that song that stirred me so much. And uh, so that's what we're going to be looking at for the next few weeks. And uh, this morning, we're going to do a bit of an introduction um, to the story, to Elijah and, and his story, the account there in, in 1 Kings um, after 17 through 19 is primarily the area that we're going to be concentrating on uh, today uh, and even over the weeks ahead. Um, 
We're going to be bouncing around quite a bit this morning. Um, we don't have a, a particular passage that we're concentrating on. Um, you want to bring me that mic? Um, and uh, so we're going to be kind of, like I said, kind of be bouncing around. I'm going to kind of just do kind of like an overview of, of, uh, uh, of Elijah's story and, and what's going on here. Thank you. Stand by. one's better. There. For a minute. Uh oh. Oh, there, it's still there. All right. So, anyway, like I said, we're going to be kind of bouncing, be bouncing around chapter 17 through 19. Um, we're going to be kind of hitting some of the high spots as, as, as I kind of just do a kind of an overview of Elijah's story, just so we kind of refresh our memories. You know, many of us are familiar with it, um, but maybe some of us aren't. And and maybe we forget some of the things, so we're going to just kind of refamiliarize ourselves with it. So go ahead and open your Bibles to, to 1 Kings and uh, chapter 17, and uh, that way at least you have a, a starting point as we kind of bounce around a little bit. It's page 379 of the Pew Bible if you don't have one. So um, like I said, we're going to be kind of bouncing around in a few, few different passages. Don't worry that you have to necessarily follow along with all of them because like I said it's going to be a bit of a review today. So who who was Elijah? He was a prophet who lived in difficult times and he stood against idol worship when the northern kingdom was rapidly turning from God. Elijah is most most well known for his big showdown with the prophets of Baal. That's probably what most of us re remember him by. That's kind of that, the crescendo of, of his ministry, right? Um, Elijah challenged Israel to decide who they were going to follow. He told them, make a choice. You've got to make a choice. And he showed that talking smack started long before football, because if you think about some of the things that he said, right, uh, to the prophets of Baal, um, you know, he was, he was willing to talk a game. Elijah preached during a, a time of, of great division for the nation of Israel. As a matter of fact, the nation was so divided that they, that they were actually divided, right? They were actually divided into the, the northern kingdom of Judah and, or the southern, southern kingdom of Judah and the northern kingdom of Israel. I mean, that's how divided this nation had grown. We think our nation is divided, right? This nation actually, actually divided. Elijah comes in to the scene during the, the reign of Ahab, and he's one of Israel's worst kings. As Ahab began to rule, the scriptures make, make a couple comments about him. If you back up a little bit to, to chapter 16, verse 30, Chapter 16 of verse 30, 1 Kings, it says, And Ahab, the son of Amri, did evil in the sight of the Lord, more than all who were before him. And then in verse 33, you drop down there, it says, Ahab did more to provoke the Lord, the God of Israel, to anger than all the kings of Israel who were before him. And to make matters worse, he married Jezebel. Mary Jezebel, the daughter of, of the pagan Sidonian king Ethbal. I mean, he was doing evil, even more evil than the kings before him. And then, and then he goes so far as he, he, he marries the daughter of a, of a pagan king, Jezebel. Making matters even worse, 1 Kings 16.32, he erected an altar for Baal and the house of Baal, which he built in Samaria. 
It says, not only did he continue in the sins, in the same sins as King Jeroboam, he was even more evil, even more evil, more than all before him. If that wasn't bad enough, he, he married a pagan. If that wasn't bad enough, he, he worshipped their pagan god. And if that was, wasn't bad enough, he, he built an altar to that pagan god. King Ahab was an evil, evil man. And he reigned for 22 years. And we complain about our political leaders, right? Yeah, they, they are doing much evil. And there's a lot of things that we could look at and say our, evil, our leaders are evil. Many of them are evil. It's true. But let's be honest. Fortunately, none of us have to put up with anything that bad. Sure, they may be constructing symbolic altars to evil. Ahab built an actual altar. An actual altar. Not symbolically. Not something that we go, oh, that is just pure evil. That's, a, that's a, an altar to evil. No. He actually physically built an altar to a false god. Imagine that actually happening today. Imagine a groundbreaking happening and our government built an altar, built a church to a false god. So this was an evil time. This was a very, very evil time. But look at Elijah's marvelous ministry. What he was able to accomplish during one of the, to the truly most awful periods in history. This is the same Elijah that James cites in James chapter 5. Where he, where, there where we're promised the, the prayer of a righteous person has great power as it's working. Right? So James, James cites Elijah and his, and his example as, as that promise. that The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it's working. These are the days of Elijah, declaring the word of the Lord. And though these are days of great trial, of famine and darkness and sword, still we are the voice in the desert crying, prepare, prepare ye the way of the Lord. God called out uh, Elijah out of, out of Gilead, a mountainous region northeast of the Jordan River, with a purpose. One was to confront Ahab with the news that punishment and judgment was coming for, wick, for Ahab's wicked behavior. That God would stop the dew and the rain. That was a bold and risky thing for Ahab to do. I mean, think about that. The bold and risky thing for him to do. Even with the vague social protection a, a, a prophet may, may have had in that time. A drought. A drought would bring an economic disaster that would weaken the nation. It would weaken it against all of its, of its surrounding um, enemies. Right? So how well do you think news that... Uh, you know, our economic you know, collapse of the United States would be received by America's leaders if that were to be proclaimed, right? It's not a popular message at all. Like so many prophets who spoke the truth, Elijah's life was in danger as soon as the words came out of his mouth. As soon as he went to Ahab and said, hey, God has seen what you've done, and he's going to punish you because of it. There's going to be no rain, no dew at all because of it. When this drought came, people would have looked to Ahab, it's your fault. He was in danger as soon as those words came out of his mouth. Here's the lesson about that. God calls each of us to do things for him and his kingdom. Each of us have a purpose, something that God is calling us to do. Sometimes those things are very uncomfortable and very unpopular. And they require 
fearlessness, and boldness. Soon after, in verse 3, God sent Elijah to hide yourself in the brook Cherith, where, which is east the Jordan. Now, it doesn't talk about uh, Elijah's mental state as he's hiding. It doesn't say a lot about you know, what he's thinking about um, during that time. And as 1 Kings 17, 6 tells us, as, uh, tells us, the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. Now, that may have seemed pretty cool at first. Here, Elijah had, had, had obeyed God, and he went and he delivered this powerful message to the wicked king, and now God had, had sent him away, and he gave him some time off, Right? Gives him some time off, and he takes care of his needs in a, in a pretty special way, right? Personal meals delivered. But then the brook dried up. Remember the drought, right? Elijah still needed protection for a much greater challenge yet to come. So God sends him to this little village of Serapath on the, on the Mediterranean. In the middle of pagan country, controlled, controlled by Ahab's father-in-law, Ethbal. And here's the lesson in that. Being sent out some time off and hide, be fed in an unusual way, and then sent to a place where you wouldn't expect to go. Here's a lesson. Sometimes God's leading doesn't seem to make sense to us. Doesn't make sense in our mind. Doesn't make sense in our, well, that's not how I would do it. Lord, are you sure? This, this just doesn't seem the right way. Sometimes God's leading doesn't seem to make sense to us. So the widow of, of Serapath, the, the widow Elijah met as he entered the city was an interesting lady. Although very poor, she was willing to obey the instructions of this strange prophet who, who told her, Thus saith the Lord. You may remember the account that's in, in chapter 17, verses 8 through 24. That's kind of where they meet. And Elijah, at first, he asked for a cup of water. Give me a cup of water. And as she's going to, to get that cup of water, he says, Well, bring me some bread, too. Bring me a morsel of bread. He said, and do it before you make some for, for you and, and, your, and your son. She's like, Lord, I only have a little bit. Just barely enough for me and my son. We're going to eat that. That's our last meal, and then we're going to die. He's like, no. Make me a meal first. Make me a meal first. Before you feed yourself and your, your son. Obviously, the Lord gave Elijah the message, but it still required some bold character to demand the last bit of food from this poor widow. I mean, think about the boldness that it took for him to demand. No, no, make me a meal first. I heard what you said. I heard this is your last meal. You have barely enough to feed yourself and your son. Make me some first. Well, she did as she was commanded, and, and the oil and the grain miraculously never ran out, just as the Lord promised. Continued to meet their needs until the drought ended. That gets us through to verse 16, and it'd be great if, if the story for the widow ended right there. But the devil never quits, does he? The devil never quits. And the son, the young son, suddenly fell ill, and he died. And the widow's faith broke in spite of the evidence of God's provision. Instead of how he had been miraculously providing this, 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 this flour, this oil, never ran out. Yet when this trial came, her faith broke, and she began to rebuke Elijah. What have you against me, O man of God? What have you against me? Why would you do this to me? 
Instead of rebuking her lack of faith or, or doubting God himself and running away, Elijah immediately sought the Lord. And then he petitioned him for the life of this young man. God heard Elijah's prayer and raised the boy back to life. When Elijah presented him to his mother, she joyfully responded in verse 24. Now I know that you are a man of God and that the word of the Lord in your mouth is the truth. Here's the lesson. Sometimes, Sometimes God grants Extraordinary displays of his power in the face of incredible circumstances. Things that we look at that are incredible. This is beyond hope. There's no way out. But God is a God of the impossible. Amen? We just have to trust God to do the extraordinary if he chooses to. These are the days of Ezekiel, the dry bones becoming his flesh. And these are the days of your servant David, rebuilding a temple of praise. These are the days of the harvest. The fields are as white in your world. And we are the laborers in your vineyard, declaring the word of the Lord. Dry bones become flesh. Sounds pretty impossible to me. God did the extraordinary. Next, out of the frying pan into the fire. 1 Kings 18, 1 through 40. Finally, after three years, God calls Elijah out of hiding. It's now time to to bring about the confrontation with the false prophets of Baal that we all remember so well. The evil Ahab had hunted everywhere for Elijah to imprison him or, or to kill him. Ahab saw Elijah as the troubler of Israel, it says, when, he, when they finally met face to face. He says, you, you, you're the troubler of Israel. Well, a little, a little note on that, that if you go back to, to Joshua, um, a troubler was, was one who had broken an oath or made a really foolish one that then brought judgment or misfortune upon the entire community. So it wasn't like he was just saying, hey, you're a jerk, and hey, you know, you've, you've made things hard for me. He was, he was saying, this is all your fault. This is all your fault, Elijah. You brought this on the people. Ahab saw Elijah as a cause of the problems they had suffered, but the truth was God had used Elijah to purge the land from the horrors of decades of false teaching. The story of how he did it couldn't be more dramatic, right? Think about the story. The demand, Elijah demanded that Ahab and and Jezebel send word to to the entire nation of Israel. Send word to them and to, to, to all 450 of the prophets of Baal. All of them to gather on the top of, of Mount Carmel there. There they would test the power of two gods Israel was worshiping. And he addresses the people. How long are you, to go, are you going to go limping between these two? How long are you going to go on limping between these two? When he says limping, he's, he's, not made, he, he's saying you keep, you keep going to this one and this one and, and, you, and you're trying to mix them together. So you can't do that. You can't go on limping between these two. You have to make a choice. Choose one. The Lord or Baal? Are you in or are you out? And of course we know the the, the story. All 450 fanatical, shouting, demon-worshipping prophets dance around their altar all day. Oh, Baal, answer us! 1 Kings 18.26, but there was no voice. No one answered. Passion surging in his heart, Elijah taunted, and he mocked these men. The whole assembly of northern Israel watching. Remember, they gathered everyone there to watch this. He addressed them. Prophets of Baal are are going on and on, and nothing's happening. And so he begins to mock them to their face. Cry louder! 
Cry louder. Maybe he's in the bathroom. Maybe he's sleeping. Maybe he went on a trip. You don't know. Cry louder. Those false prophets, they, they danced and they cried even louder and then they even cut themselves. Verse 20, 29 says, But there was no voice. No one answered. No one paid attention. Here's the lesson. Sometimes it seems like no matter what we say or do, no matter how obvious the bad guys are, nobody seems to care or respond to the message. No one pays attention. Sometimes it's hard to keep plugging. Sometimes it's hard not to give up. When it seems like no one's paying attention. So obvious. So obvious. Killing babies, obviously that's that's evil. Killing babies in the womb, it's evil. How can you not see that? Oh no. It's 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 health care. It's fine. It's her choice, her body, her choice, right? No, it's evil. No, it's it's good. It's fine. Even within the church now, right? I go, how? how? How can you not see this? Sometimes it seems as no one's paying attention and it may feel like, what's the use? Why bother? It's hard to keep plugging. Hard not to give up. Elijah didn't give up. And neither should we. Amen. Amen. Because salvation is coming. Salvation is coming. When the prophets of Baal fell exhausted to the ground, Elijah had the folks dig the the trenches around his altar deeper. Pour, Pour that precious water. Remember? Remember the drought? Take all this water. Pour it on there. Fill it up. Pour more. No more. Bring, Bring more water. There could be no doubt that God's answer would come in a spectacular way or not at all. So Elijah shouted in 1 Kings 18, 36-37, O Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, that I am your servant, and that I have done all these things at your word. Answer me, O Lord, answer me that this people may know that you, O Lord, are God and that you have turned their hearts back. Behold, he comes riding on the clouds, shining like the sun at the trumpet call. Lift your voice, it's the year of Jubilee, and out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. Answer, God did. Fire came down from heaven. It it vaporized the the sacrifice, the altar, and and the water in the trenches. When all the people saw it, they fell on their faces. And what did they say? The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. Here's the lesson. There's no God like Jehovah. There is no God like Jehovah. There is no God like Jehovah. There is no God like Jehovah. Amen? Amen. And it'd be nice to stop right there. But we have to finish the job. The work in this aftermath were not complete yet. Elijah knew he had to destroy the messengers as well as the message. So they seized the prophets of Baal. They took them down to the brook of Kishon. They slaughtered them there. Here's the lesson. Although that's, that awful execution is, is definitely an Old Testament thing, our job is never done by merely pointing out that truth is on our side. 
We must continue to declare the word of the Lord as long as there is someone that is opposed to it. We can't just rest on that victory. We have to keep going. We must finish the job. We must finish the job. And we shouldn't despair. We should prepare. Yet even here, after one of the greatest victories over evil recorded in Scripture, Elijah, Elijah ran away from angry Jezebel. Fearing for his life, he ran to the desert and he hid in a cave, sucking on his spiritual thumb and curling up in a spiritual fetal position. He despaired for his life. Beg God to just take him home. It's useless, Lord. I'm the only one left. Nobody else cares. Oh, just take me now. It's pointless. Sometimes the highs and lows are so draining that our spiritual, our spiritual strength leaks out like helium from a balloon. All that's left is a saggy, baggy shadow of what we used to be, what we should be. Sometimes as our life nears its end, we think all that's left to do is just lay down and and wait for the end. But here's the lesson. Before that, just as with Elijah, there must be an Elisha. There must be an Elisha. A successor has to be identified and charged to carry on. We don't get to just lay down. Oh, it's all worthless. It's pointless. I'm done. I'm retired now. No, you don't get to retire until you train your replacement. For those of you that are coming of age... Like it or not, you, you are Elisha's. You are today's Elisha's. You are the next generation. Look at the history of the church. Generations that have have come and gone. We, Faith Chapel, we, right now, right now, are the Elisha's for today. There are still seven thousands whose knees have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. There is a remnant. God still has work he has called us to do. Generations are still left to be taught and won for Christ. That work is not done when we die. The battle will still go on until the Lord returns. And until then, we must prepare for those who follow us. We must leave legacies for those who come after us. That's how the Lord builds his church. How the, bo- the Lord builds his church. He makes, we're out to go out and make disciples. People that are, are like us, like Christ. To follow after That's how the Lord builds his church. Matthew 16, 18, he says, the gates of hell will not prevail against it. These are the days of Elijah. Look around. These are the days of Elijah. Faith Chapel is here to carry on the same mission, to stand firm on God's truth, to boldly and fearlessly proclaim it, to to confront false teacher and false religion, to call people to repentance and faith. And we are the laborers in your vineyard, declaring the word of the Lord. We are the voice in the desert crying, prepare ye for the way of the Lord. He's coming back. Amen? He is coming back. Do you believe that? Prepare ye the way of the Lord. There is no God like Jehovah. There is no God like Jehovah. There is no God like Jehovah. Amen? Let's pray.
Father God, we come before you humbled and in awe of who you are, that you use ordinary people, that there is no God like Jehovah, that you choose to use us. And Father, I pray that we would be obedient to the call that you have put on our lives. Father, that we would stand boldly on your truth, that we would, we would be fearless in our, in our witness, and our testimony, that we would call out the false teaching and the evil around us, that we would be the laborers in your vineyard, that we would prepare ye the way of the Lord. Father, we look forward to how you are going to work all of this out in our lives for your glory. We give you thanks that you have called each of us to be this generation's Elishas for your glory. Amen. Let's stand as we close with 179. Prepare ye the way for the Lord. Amen? Go and prepare the way.